Hey what up guys, it's Matt, and I want to do this video, um, I've been wanting to do it kind of since the summer, uh, and it kind of just left my brain, and it hit me just a couple of weeks back that I should probably do this video, because um, I think it's another helpful video uh, that may provide some sort of um, efficacy to uh, other students um, as they progress through their programs. Um, and so it's going to be about care plans. So um, your program may or may not have a ton of emphasis on this. Um, you know, it's one could argue that RTs don't necessarily need or do a lot of care plans. The reality is, uh, from an academic standpoint, they help reinforce clinical knowledge and really kind of force you to really use your brain to remember back to all of the stuff. Um, that maybe you've done in prior semesters that you haven't looked at as much um, and kind of bring it all back together. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize now too if there's any weird editing. It's because uh, the software I use to video edit does not allow simple like photo overlays of video. So if there's any weird edits, um, forgive me now <laughs> and uh, I'll try to work on it in the future as I do more uh, things like this. So, Alright guys, so in this first care plan um, this is basically what I call my bad example um, this was my first care plan from this semester uh, I basically pencil whipped it in about 10 minutes and uh, I did so because it was basically a participation grade this first one uh, you turn something in with writing on it you were going to get uh, 10 out of 10. <clears throat> so uh, do not be like me. Uh, take these serious. Um, but as you can see, I get uh, you have basic information across the top, name, course number, dates. Um, you can see I left my instructor initials blank <laughs> because again, like I said, I, I, I pencil whipped this super quick after my instructor left. So uh, then you have your patient data. So again, uh, age, sex, height, and it's typically even in centimeters, um, weight, uh, it, it may be given to in pounds, it may be given to in both. Uh, usually it's best bet to do it in kilograms, um, especially if you're doing metric for the height as well. Uh, chief complaint, of course, uh, what brought them to the hospital, their diagnosis, um, basically what was causing the chief complaint or what did the doctors determine and then a uh, history of the present illness so anything in this case uh, that could have led to um, basically any, any disease processes that typically could lead to the the diagnosis or the chief complaint um, you usually find this stuff in what's called the H&P doctors H&P so uh, it's usually under whatever systems notes on that particular patient so uh, you know take your time read through the HMP uh, and as you can see in my case we have a problem needs column a causation column a care goals column a treatment or therapy column and an evaluation column um, so problems needs as you can see it's where I wrote the actual disease processes or, or issues themselves causation um, is typically referring to what causes the problem. <clears throat> and so that's where one of my first big issues are. Uh, so the, the kind of that green writing you see were the markings from my uh, instructor. So um, one of his biggest gripes uh, was that I was using kind of layman's terms, obesity diet issues, to describe diabetes, which is not wrong, but it's not medically accurate terms. Um, again, congestive heart failure, usually it's hypervolemia, as you can see, pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonale, core pulmonale um, chronic hypoxemia causing a shortness of breath. Um, dig deep and, you know, care about getting the details. Um, for care goals, despite that I, I kept it still pretty, pretty lay 
Um, you can see he marked that as good, so he, he actually liked the care goals. I mean, what do you want to do um, for these problems? Like, what's the point of the care goal? Um, treatment therapy, again, you can see a lot of the writing there. Um, what's just specifically that uh, I, I was very um, rudimentary, you know, I very topical. I didn't really go into any detail or anything. It's like, yeah, I list medications, but dosages. Um, I listed oxygen therapy for congestive heart failure, but don't have a uh, specific liters per minute or FiO2 percentage. Um, guy was on um, BiPAP. I have no settings. Um, again, dosages. Um, you know, I write bronchodilators for shortness of breath, yet I fail to uh, list what type. Uh, is he on more than one? Is one a schedule to one a PRN? Stuff like that. Um, if it led to intubation, ultimately, which it did in this particular patient's case, like I don't have the ventilator settings, and all of these are available in the doctor's notes or somewhere in the patient's chart. So, uh, and then finally, the evaluation is the results. So not just how you evaluate the efficacy of the treatments, but um, like, what are you looking for? So obviously you control diabetes by controlling blood sugar, by, you know, monitoring um, uh, your, your blood, sh your sugar intake, your carbohydrate intake, your, your, you know, your insulin usage and whatnot. Um, and just to basically say test blood sugar regularly, like that's just kind of a, um, no better way to put it, half-ass uh, way to do that. So as you can see, uh, this is, again, what I'm calling my bad example. This is a bad example. This is what you do not want to do. All right, guys, in this next example, um, this is my most recent care plan. It's not all marked up because this picture was taken um, before I turned it in because we will not be getting any more back. Uh, they will simply be graded and then put in our files um, to be kept for, uh, like, co-arc audits and that kind of thing. Um, so on this one, I did take things a little more serious, especially after the first one. Um, I sat down for probably about an hour clicking through a, a patient's chart to get this information. So same basic information, um, you know, again, age, sex, height, weight, you can see now I'm, I'm consistent there. I have centimeters, I have uh, kilograms. Uh, you know, I try to spell things out um, in this example, so I'm just SOB, I wrote shortness of breath, the primary diagnosis in this case was an acute respiratory failure with hypoxia and um, hypercapnia, and his history of present illness. Um, so obviously COPD, I still shorthand because writing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease every time is probably unnecessary. Um, and so this time I really just tried to dig deep into the details of the um, of the notes, um, the first one I want to point out is under the problem needs column on the very bottom left corner. You'll see um, the patient had a pneumonia, um, but I also put unknown pathogen um, because, uh, as we know, pneumonias can be viral, they can be bacterial, or they can be fungal. And in this case, in the guy's chart, um, it wasn't. Uh, clear yet. They were still undergoing various cultures in the lab. Um, they did start them on a few antibiotics, which I imagine are just um, routine um, or prophylactic in that case. But um, And you can just see I just took a little bit more time. Um, it was a lot more detailed. You know, I wasn't pencil whipping this stuff down. Uh, you know, in, in, in some of these you, you can see like uh, under hypertension in this case, uh, probably being caused by CHF, which is his left-sided uh, left heart uh, failure. Um, the patient also had re recently stopped his blood pressure meds, which was listed in the chart. Uh, and when presented to the ED, he had a blood pressure of 235 over, what was that, 119, and a heart rate of 159. Okay, so now we have detail, like define hypertension. Well, yeah, that blood pressure is uh, pretty hypertensive, I would say so. 
So care goals, obviously we want to uh, maintain a normal blood pressure um, since hypotension itself is pretty vague, it's just a high blood pressure. Um, so I, I list what is kind of your textbook normal. Um, the one drug that he was on listed there as far as his um, hemodynamic type drugs uh, was there. Um, again, the evaluation of the treatment would be to continually monitor the hemodynamics for a normal blood pressure or at least something lower than, than the 235. Um, and as you can see, one of his most recent uh, blood pressures was 100 over 48. Um, and his heart rate, 60 to 100 is normal. His, his most recently recorded one was 102. Um, so as you can see in this one, I definitely took more time in the patient's chart um, to gather details. You know, and, and the reality is, um, as a, a, a fellow classmate, pointed out to me is you really don't need to look at the patient's chart to get all of this information um, you know other than the patient data and their problems and needs and maybe their treatments and therapies um, the reality is um, and maybe the evaluations um, if the patient had been there for um, you know X number of days to see something improve based on the treatments um, things like care goals and causations, uh, you know, that's the kind of, that's where you're digging back into your, uh, you know, your, your textbooks, your, your disease knowledge, um, your, uh, pharmacology a little bit, and you start to really put some of this stuff together. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need someone to tell you that, uh, you know, smoking causes COPD. You know, in this case, it was nice because it was listed in 80, uh, 80 pack year history. But um, so this particular example, um, I don't have a grade on this yet. Uh, I'll probably have one posted next week. And so I'll just update with what I got on this particular care plan. But uh, I would like to think this is a good care plan. Um, certainly better than my last example, which I'm just going to call the bad care plan. <laughs> All right, and finally, um, this last care plan. Now, number one, it's obviously not me. Uh, I'm not taking credit for this. Um, it's one of my classmates, uh, Christopher, and I mentioned him um, in that last care plan. He was the one who kind of pointed out about not necessarily needing the patient's chart to do the entire care plan uh, just to get the stuff specific to the patient. Um, but he gave me permission to use um, his care plan as basically an excellent example. Uh, you know, if you really want to like nail your care plans, like this is the quality of work uh, you need to be putting in. Um, he was the only uh, only one who basically didn't have green all over his initial care plan. I, uh, as you can see in the image, I think the only thing he didn't have was his instructor initials. Um, Basically, everyone else in the class there's were marked up just like my first one. Um, uh, so Chris did a really, really good job here. I mean, you can see um, just the detail. I mean, I love that he doesn't just have these the generic CHF or, uh, you know, diabetes or something and his problem needs. You know, he actually has uh, really, really good descriptions. Uh, presents with high fever. Max was a 101 caused by um, a bacterial pneumonia. So causing the fever and response, part of the immune response basically. So it's, you, you, you can just see by just literally the amount he wrote. And don't think just because someone writes a lot that it's good information, it could be filler. But when you go through and you read um, his descriptions, you know, talking about uh, difficult breathing at rest on a uh, Looks like ventilator and PIP rising pneumonia infection cause poor VQ, so your ventilation perfusion. Um, uh, you know, he, that's getting very textbook, that's getting very detailed, and um, in all reality, that's really what a care plan should really be. Um, really describing the, the process in detail. So I wanted to throw his in as an example. If you really want to strive, um, for uh, really, really high quality work, um, 
look at this example. This is just like, this is my perfect example, my excellent example. Um, uh, so shout out to Chris. Thank you for letting me use this. Um, and hopefully uh, other people can, can look at this and maybe like uh, strive to achieve um, this kind of detail and this kind of high quality care plan work. All right guys, so that's that's it. Those are the, the three care plan examples I wanted to present today um, in this video. And I hope that it kind of gives you an idea of a, um, a bad, a good, and a great example um, of, a, of care plans. And it kind of shows you um, the effort you really do need to put into them. Um, and if you really go the extra mile and dig deep, I mean, if you've gotten to the point where you're doing critical care, um, patient care plans, uh, you have all this knowledge and um, just taking a few extra minutes to sit down and, and think. And even if you need to pull out an old textbook to double check something, um, it's, it's, it's worth it, um, you know, to basically care enough to sit down and, and do that kind of work. Um, you know, and if you have a hard time writing that much, I mean, look at my second example um, again that I didn't write a ton but I still feel like that it was a pretty good example particularly compared to that first one which I feel like is kind of everyone's first um, care plan maybe uh, not during your critical care rotation but we definitely want to avoid that that's that's not the high quality work you want to put in it's it's kind of a lazy way to do it um, so don't be like me on that very first care plan um, definitely strive to be like Chris on that last care plan. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching a bit again. Um, thanks to Chris, uh, for letting me use his care plan in this video. And, uh, hopefully, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.